The delay queue is a special type of queue that holds elements that are scheduled to be removed at some point in the future. It's a blocking queue, meaning that it will block threads that will try to take elements from the queue until the appropriate delay has elapsed. Elements in the delay queue must implement the delayed interface, which provides the getDelay method to determine the remaining delay for the element. When a thread tries to take an element from the queue using the take method, it will block until the element's delay has expired or the queue is interrupted. Internally, a delay queue is implemented as a priority queue, which means that elements are ordered based on their remaining delay. The element with the shortest remaining delay is always at the head of the queue. The delay queue is thread safe and can therefore be safely accessed by multiple threads. So what would real world use cases be regarding the delay queue? Well, the delay queue can be used to schedule tasks to be executed at a specific time in the future. Also, delay queues can be used to implement timeouts for operations that should be cancelled if they take too long. And it is also possible to use delay queues for rate limiting, so that the rate is limited at which certain actions can be performed. In general, delay queues can very well be used in producer-consumer contexts. Now that we've covered the basics of the delay queue, let's take a look at the code example. And don't worry, I've uploaded the entire example onto GitHub. This way you can check out the code for yourself and create your own test cases. All right, so here we have a Maven project and we also have scripts for building the application as well as running the application. Now, depending on your operating system, you're gonna use the CMD files for Windows and the shell files for Mac and Linux, just to keep that in mind. All right, let's start by creating ourselves a delayed task, which implements the delayed interface. Here we also define a private variable, delay in nanos, which holds the nanoseconds of the desired delay. We will also create ourselves a private string variable, message, which is something specific to our delay task class. You could add any variable that you'd like. All right, let's build up a constructor, which takes the delay time as well as our message. So the delay that we get provided with is a time that starts from now, which is system nano time, and goes until to a certain number of nanoseconds into the future which is why we add those two numbers together and save them in our private variable delay nanos. We also privately save the message. Now let's implement the getDelay method, which was provided by the delayed interface. What we first want to get is the difference in nanoseconds between our initial setting and the system time. We then provide this difference to the convert method of the time unit and also provide what it is, nanoseconds. The result of this will be returned to the caller. Now let's implement the compareTo method, which compares the delay of another object that also implements the delay interface. In the case that it's exactly this object, we just return zero, which means that neither we nor the object has any delay. If it's a different object, we check if it's the same type of object, delay task. If it is, we convert the delayed object into a delayed task object and save it in the variable other. Now we make use of the long class to use its compare method to compare our delay in nanos with the delay in nanos of the other objects. And the response of that will be returned to the caller. And in the case that the delayed object is not a delayed task object, we again make use of the long class to use its compare method to compare what is brought back by our getDelay method as well as the object's getDelay method. All right, let's also create another method, getMessage, to return the message that we have. Okay, now let's get back to the main method and put it all together. Let's start by creating a delay queue holding delayed task objects, which we call delay queue, and in which we put a new instance of delay queue. Now let's add tasks with different delays. Let's add a first task having a delay of 5400 milliseconds, a second task having a delay of 500 milliseconds, a third task having a delay of 3200 milliseconds, and a fourth task with a delay of 10200 milliseconds. Now let's process the tasks as they become available. Let's first remember the start time in milliseconds, which we get from the system current time millis method. Now let's create a while loop, which runs as long as the delay queue is not empty. Let's first print to the terminal get task. This is just the print method, not the print line method, meaning at the end of the line, there's no new line. Now let's try to take a task by using delay queue take and put it into task of type delay task. After having done that, we again remember the current time which we get from system current time millis and put it in stop time millis. Now we can print a line, then the amount of milliseconds between start and stop, as well as the tasks message, which we get from task get message. This also is a print line and not a print, meaning at the end of the string, we have a new line. 
You might also have noticed that the delay you take has a red underline. This is because we didn't catch what can potentially be thrown, which is an interrupted exception. So let's build a try-catch context around the entire while loop. And in the case of an exception, we print the line take interrupted and the appropriate error message. All right, time to see this in action. Let's build and run the application. And here we can see all our tasks with an ordering of the smallest first and biggest last. The total time of this was 10,200 milliseconds, starting with the second task, followed by the third task. Then on third place, we have the first task and the last task is the fourth task. In summary, we first checked the basics of the delay queue. After that, we created a code example showcasing how a collection of our delay tasks are handled using the delay queue. All right, that's it for the short introduction to the Java delay queue. What did you think about the short and concise format of this video? If you found this video has brought some value to you, hit the like button. This helps this YouTube channel grow and shows appreciation for this type of content. Subscribing to this channel is also a good idea. This is the best way to get informed about future videos just like this one. Alright, I would like to thank you very much for watching. My name is Gene. See you in the next video.